So I'm Bill Finzer. I am a senior scientist at the Concord Consortium, which has two offices, one in Concord, Massachusetts, and one where I am in California, Emeryville, California, across the bay from San Francisco. And I have been an educational software developer in the area of giving data tools to students for 35, 40 years. And this work with CODAP is, um, began about nine years ago um, and was connected to a previous piece of software uh, called Fathom uh, that was widely used in uh, teaching uh, introductory statistics and in math, mathematics at the high school level. Uh, I lead the development of CODAP um, and I, I really enjoy programming and getting things to happen on the screen and I enjoy thinking about how people learn and how people conceive of data and um, thinking of ways to make the approach to data seamless, fluid, fun. Um, I'm really glad to be with you today and I'm glad it's a small group. Um, in the agenda, you can see the goals and I'll just uh, try not to read them, but explain them. So uh, you're all in the same place with regard to CODAP. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, so I want you to be at the end of this familiar enough with CODAP and sort of ready to explore it on your own and decide whether uh, it fits in your <clears throat> work, your teaching, uh, whatever. And I, even, if, even if it doesn't, I, I want you to um, think that your students would enjoy it if you were to use CODAP with them. Um, and finally, that you have at least an idea of one thing that you could actually do uh, very soon with CODAP and your students. So I hate slides but I have one slide. So um, you all seem fluent with Zoom already because you found the, mm -hmm. well, anyway, I'm gonna share my screen. You're gonna be sharing your screen at times during this. And now I want to know if you can read that all right. Is the resolution fine? Looks good. Good. All right, so somewhere oh, I have to get this thing out of the way. Move it. Oh, I can move it down there. That's good. Because here's my one slide. I could even present it. Ooh. So, CODAP. Um, it was developed with money from the National Science Foundation, and it is online. So you don't have to install anything. It runs in the browser. And you don't have to log in, which can be a great advantage in a classroom. It's open source, which um, means that other groups can take advantage of the work that we've put into the development of it. And we have designed it with grades 5 through 14 in mind. That's a pretty wide spectrum. So um, the, the goal is to have a low threshold so that anybody can get started, but to have enough capability there that it can be useful all the way through um, lower division undergraduate. As I mentioned, I've been working on this quite a while and there's a lot of research and user testing and um, development of CODAP requires an interdisciplinary team because data are everywhere 
uh, except in most classrooms. And um, we, we, we need to be thinking about students working with data in all subjects. And so we have to be working with people from different disciplines. So um, the Concord Consortium is the home of CODAP. And CODAP has the word, the letter P in it, and P stands for platform. And the idea is that other groups, other curriculum development groups, can make use of CODAP in their projects um, as the data technology that students use. So it's a platform. And we've worked with uh, 14, about 14 different groups that have been NSF funded and provided uh, funding to our group so that we can continue development. And that uh, model um, is working very well. So uh, we continue to get the funding that we need to continue the development. Uh, that's a double-edged sword uh, for you guys. Um, it means that we're always changing things. Um, and uh, the worst part of that is that we introduce bugs. So uh, that can be troublesome. And we're about to start thinking of having a stable release that uh, changes only seldom and is less, much less likely to have annoying bugs in it. So CODAP, uh, we, we have on this website, codap.concord.org, uh, data sets and help and tutorials, uh, and we'll visit some of those things. And one of the best parts of this is that it's free. Any questions? Yep. By the way, could you, could you see that when I presented it? Yeah, yes. okay, good. All right, back to the, um, to that, and now I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh, and we have Diana. Yeah, hi. Hi. Would you introduce yourself very briefly and tell us yeah, where sure. you are and what you do? Yep. Okay. So um, I am the science chair for um, private school, Wilbraham and Munson Academy um, in Massachusetts. Um, and I just came out of teaching a class because we're completely online now. So that's why I'm a little bit late coming in here. Um, so I teach biology and AP biology, and then um, I run the science department. And have you any prior CODAP experience? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest with you, because there's been so many workshops that I've done throughout the years that I may have seen it, especially at, if you've been at NSTA before, um, but I have not used it all that much is is I did do a research um, when I was working at a charter school um, project where we were looking at weather and we were pulling things from there um, and we actually had a weather station sitting on top of our building that the kids were um, using data and, and uploading data um, but to be honest with you I had brilliant kids they were my AP kids and that was their project part of their research so they actually did it all and I just found the resources and the mentors for them. Well you're in good companies so far uh, none of us except me have <laughs> any experience with CODAP and Arami are you there? I am but I can't figure out how to turn on my my um, camera so you have a Zoom window in front of you with these with our faces on them? Yeah, I can see all of you. You just can't see me. And I have this issue in Google Meet too. And bottom there, left, bottom left. Is there anything covering up your camera by chance? No. It just says um, start video, stop video. And in order to fix the issue, I'd have to restart my computer. Ah, OK. Is, so, is there nothing, can I, I, sorry, it's Diana. Is there, down where you can mute your mic, there's no video there with an arrow? I already have the video on. You just can't see me. Okay, so if you hit the, the it says stop video, but it doesn't really stop the video. If you click that, you should turn your camera on. Yeah, but it sounds like she's got some issue with her, with her camera. Yeah. Okay. So Arami, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? 
Yeah, um, I teach biology and AP biology and anatomy physiology in a private high school in California, Santa Monica. Um, I've been teaching for 16 years and this is the first I've heard of CODAP. Oh, great. So we're, again, all in the same boat except me. <laughs> and um, you missed the about CODAP, but um, it well, was- I, Yeah, I went through the website after oh, I, when great. I first signed up for the short course, I, I looked through it all and I watched the videos and all of that. Good. Um, so what we're gonna do now is um, do a getting started activity, which um, is in CODAP. I guess I'll demo that just so I don't have any problems with it. So up at the top, there's a uh, a link to the CODAP homepage, and you could go there, and that would provide you a way to start CODAP, but I've also put here the direct, what does it say, test tube flute? That doesn't make any sense. Let's see what happens when I click it. That's what should happen. So that's CODAP, and when I click open, um, I get this list of example documents, and I would like you to try the getting started with CODAP. Um, and when you have done that, sorry, I have to move this thing out of the way. Um, uh, if, if you get done before other people, you can take a look at these challenge cards um, you can also uh, go beyond what's in the Getting Started document and actually um, uh, explore the MAMMALS data set and find something interesting about it. And uh, we'll talk about the things you find when you're done. So five, at most 10 minutes, I'll ping you at, to see how things are going at various times. And if you have trouble, speak up and I'll ask you to share your screen and we'll figure out what's going on. Is anybody having trouble opening CODAP? Oh, I want to stop sharing. I'm looking at what looks like examples. It's a green sheet. It says four seals. Is that what I'm saying? Yes. To... And okay. the second one is um, getting started with CODAP. Oh, is okay. That, yep. Is that true? Yeah. And there it is. Okay, I found it. <laughs> okay. And you'll see um, there's a, a checklist of five things that you're gonna learn how to do in that document. Yeah. I think somebody has their mic open and there's a lot of children. <laughs> Good morning. Did you get ready? Did, did you get ready for the morning? Good morning. Uh, Rami, you might want to mute your oh, microphone. You're right.
Anybody stuck? We've used we that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, man. Are we supposed to be pulling in data from another sheet? I can open up like the make a graph and everything, but there's nowhere, there's no data access. So the very first checkbox asks you to drag a thing into the document. So do I just drag that from my computer or where do I get yep. that? In fact, there's a little video that shows you how to do it. Do you see it? Um. I do. It's just I don't have a data sheet to drag. Oh, maybe I uh, would you mind uh, sharing your screen? Sure. Okay. Ah. So um, next to that checkbox. There's a sheet that drag that oh, okay. there into there. In and there's your data. Okay. That's where I was missing. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. And you could stop sharing. Or not. I'm happy to watch. <laughs> We've used that uh, getting started five step thing from with kids in fifth grade and various grade levels all the way through college and with teacher groups and it generally works really well. David, are you using a tablet or something on your desk? You're muted. Uh, I'm. Uh, I have a. I'm using my iPad as a second screen, so I got a. I downloaded an app called Duet, so I'm using the tablet to sort of manipulate the 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 document. Oh, good. I, I'm curious what troubles you will have because there are. It's. Yeah, so far it's. It's treating the uh, iPad as just another screen, uh -huh. and I can just use the um, the my pen, the i the pen, uh -huh. as just a pointer, and it, it, it it's, it's great. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's working perfect because it's it's all it's still on it's still based in the computer, but it's just the screen with a basically an overlay, like a almost like a smart um, what is it smart notebook or a smart screen type thing. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, it's great. Like it's been one of the most helpful things when teaching because I can set up um, like the smart notebook on my tablet and then just write on there directly. Excellent. So good. We just recently uh, kind of tuned Kodak to work uh, reasonably well now with iPads and other touch devices uh, when they're actual uh, touch devices as opposed to your setup. Interesting. Yeah, because like this seems great so far. Like, I can already picture how I'm going to use it with some of my students. Uh -huh. so, like the, especially the ones in science research, they bring in a lot of data sometimes. So this is, yep. it, it, it really does make it like just being able to graph and plot things. It's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Bill, um, would someone I'm, be willing to share their screen and show us what you have? Bill, I have a quick question about yeah. the maps. I'm playing around with that one. Um, and it's asking, the we have all these colors on uh, the map of the US. And although I don't see a legend, is there a legend that should be popping up someplace? Why don't you share your screen? Let's take Certainly. a look. Sure. Ah, you need to, there's the legend. You see there. it? Oh, down here at the bottom. Oh, you yeah. know, it was probably chopped off the bottom. Got it. Yeah. 
Okay. Now, if you click on one of the portions of that legend. Oh, look at that. Yeah. So this clicking, selecting, and having it show up in the table and in the um, graphs, this dynamic linked selection is a really, really important feature for learners, uh, for any of us really. Mm -hmm. Do you still have the uh, mammals? No, you closed the mammals. Um. So, um, would you mind opening up mammals again? Sure. There we go. Did you find any interesting things or did anybody find any interesting um, things about mammals from this, these data? I'm a map nerd being a geographer, so I went right to that one and after uh -huh. looking at the introduction, I'm sorry, rather than this one. So try clicking on uh, the, the lifespan graph. Click on some of those points there. Oh, look at that. Can anyone oh, I love guess? the correlation. Look at that. Wow. Can anyone guess what the top point is? Don't click on it yet. Okay. Long life. Hmm. A long lived mammal. Tortoise. Okay. Go for Mammal? it. Uh, it's, humans. it's humans, right? Yep. And uh, how about if you do something like drag height? to the bottom axis of the right graph there. Yes. Oh my, look at that. And um, if you were to drag mass to the, don't do it yet, but if you were to drag mass to the vertical axis, what do you think you would see in the resulting scatter plot? Mm. And I'm not a asking uh, just you. Uh, others could <laughs> speak up. They'd, they'd fall along a linear pattern. You think so? Is that because you've already done it or because you're yeah. conjecturing? Because height, height on one axis and mass on the other axis, height and mass should be directly correlated. Let's find out. Missy, will you oblige? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Now, what's interesting about that? We have outliers. And what is that outlier? Uh, now, it's they don't fit feedback. with like the average. But if you put your mouse right over that and just hover mm -hmm. there, where it says African mm -hmm. in the table, just just pause there for a moment. Oh, there. an elephant. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see, that's the other one. Oh, they're both elephants. Now, I'm going to show you a useful trick. Um, maybe you have to pass the mouse to me. Do you see where it says remote control or something? Uh. Now this is a, a, a Zoom thing. Oh, 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 oh. Let's see, maybe. Remote? That's it, click on that. Uh, I think that's something you might have. I don't have that particular control. Okay. Um, why don't you stop sharing? Okay. And I will share. And I want to go to Coda. Don't know why it says test tune flute there.
So I'll do what you did. Height and mass. Now what we really want to do is kind of see whether your conjecture about linearity, maybe it holds down here in this corner. So if I grab the numbers on an axis, I can stretch it out. Whoops. And I can do the same this way. If I hold down the option key and click, you see the little plus there, that's another way to zoom in. So, I don't know, it doesn't look linear to me. And those of you who may have thought about relationships between size of an animal and its mass um, may remember that there's a kind of a cubic thing going on there. And I think maybe that's what we're seeing. Well, Bill, I'm also wondering about the uh, chosen data, pieces of data for this application. And that's pushing us in one direction with analysis. What a great uh, researcher type comment. <laughs> <laughs> what, in, I, I think it's akin to, can we generalize at all from this? And what is it we're looking at? And let's start with what does each of these points represent? And represents a mammal. Um, and how was this sample of mammals chosen, not randomly, presumably somebody thought, let's, let's pick cool mammals, etc. So um, we shouldn't be, we shouldn't take this kind of investigation that we're doing about the relationship between height and mass very uh, far. And it might be quite different if we had a whole bunch of mice, for example, and measured their length versus their mass, we might see something much clearer. So I'm going to stop us there. Does anybody have any questions so far about Kodak? David, did you have a question? No, okay. No, I was just looking at the, the data. This is, just, this is great so far, so. All right, now we're going to try something different. I'm going to stop sharing. We're going to look at it, another data set where all of the entities, all the cases we call them, uh, are the, of the same type. They're all roller coasters, but it's not a random sample, so we won't be able to generalize, Laura. Um, and um, I'd like you to work in pairs. So I have a little control on my Zoom screen here that says breakout rooms. And I'm going to say three rooms, two participants per room. I'm going to create these breakout rooms. So you'll be there with someone assigned randomly. And one of you should share their screen. Um, so I actually have to leave around maybe 9, 10 or so because I have a, another meeting that I have to set up for. Um, so I, I can't... Uh, we will be done with this before then. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay. And um, so uh, one of you will share the screen, your screen with the other. And, um, and you'll go through this roller coasters thing, figuring out more stuff you can do with CODAP. And you'll see that there in the, in the uh, Google Doc, there's um, a table. And you can check when you've figured out how to do something. If you want, uh, you can provide a hint for other people about how to do it. And uh, at the bottom of the table are two headings, CODAP discoveries. And there's an example discovery there. And roller coaster discoveries. Um, and there's an example discovery there. So if you would. Uh, the two of you come up with uh, one or two examples, one or two discoveries under CODAP and one or two discoveries under uh, roller coasters. So I'm going to create the breakout rooms. You'll be with your partner. You can work for, let's say, 10 or 15 minutes. I can commit so I can come in and, and see how you're doing and talk to you. And I think there's even a way you can call for me to come in. 
Um, and this will be 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. Okay, here we go. Open all rooms. Regina, did you get um, something that says join the room? Um, I don't think so, because I got, I got booted. Oh, it says not joined. OK, let's see. How do I do that now? You got booted. Poor Laura. She's alone. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Okay, you asked for help. Oh, that's Laura asked for help. Oh, join breakout room. Regina, are you still here? Okay. Breakout rooms. Close all rooms. Oh. So, um, Laura, I'm closing all the rooms and we'll try again. But it takes time. Oh, there's Regina. Okay. So the two of you are now together and I'm going to see if I can cancel this, but I can't. So, um, in 21 seconds, everyone will be back on the main screen and I'll um, repeat this process. Hello. Hi, Hello. welcome back. Hello. We had a little snafu and uh, so we're going to try again. One group was not able to form. So we'll try again. And you'll probably end up with, or maybe you even won't. I bet you'll end up with the same person. So you'll be okay. Any questions before I do that? OK, here we go. Regina, do you see the thing to press? Group three. Yay, that worked. Nice. Oh, there you are.
Yeah, I've been working with Zoom and the like for business for a little bit, so. Yeah, me too. Um, but I don't get to do breakout rooms very often. So yeah. That's an advantage. Actually, I'm uh, hoping to try breakout rooms with, uh, we're, we're going to try to do a game night. Um, family members do a game night, and I'm hoping to use breakout rooms to let people play different games mm -hmm. and then bring people back together. So that should be good. I'm going to have to test all that out. How'd it go, David? I was, uh, it was awesome. Yeah. I, I like the map. That was like, well, the ones you can see, you can see like the, where the fastest ones are clustered or. Like, can I'm you share your screen bit. for us and, and show us what you mean? Sure, let's see if I can figure out how to do that part. Let's see. Uh, um, at the bottom of your window that says share. Let's see. And you get to choose whether you uh, want to share your whole desktop or just the browser window. Bill, well, right, he, well, he's doing that. We had a problem with my computer looking at the map. Um, is it, I was running Firefox. Is it a difference between Chrome and Firefox and running I some of the applications? I don't know. We, we'll take a look. So, okay, so what did you mean about uh, clustering? So like, and these were mostly, you can kind of see that the ones that were selected for this were um, clustered mostly in the Northeast, a lot of the the, the roller coasters, but then the darker dots uh -huh. seem to, I think I did speed, top speed. They were, there was like clusters of faster ones sort of around Detroit and New York and Washington, Pennsylvania. So and if you like click cities. on the, the rightmost uh, part of the legend there. Right. Whoa. That is even cooler. Yeah, so a lot of them are in the there's a bunch in the Northeast, uh -huh. it seems, based on the data that's here. Uh -huh. And let's try the, the lowest speed ones. Yeah, those seem to be spread out a little bit more. Uh -huh. Any comments? That is, that is phenomenal. Um, I, I also yeah. looked at age and uh, that uh, also, yeah. yes. Okay. Can you drag age group to the? Older, newest, wow. So notice there are two kinds of legends. This one's a categorical legend with categories. And the legend you had previously was a, a it's called a choropleth legend, it breaks up a numerical scale into equal, approximately equal groups. And that little marquee, uh, that uh, dotted rectangle up there, if you click right once there. on that, and now go and click and drag somewhere. There you go. You're able to select a cluster of points in the, uh, in the map. Yeah. And if you have a graph open, why don't you make your case table, your, your table a little less high by grabbing its bottom and now make a graph for us of something. So, top speed. Good, that's good enough. Now, you can do the same kind of selection in the graph. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Now go over to the graph and click and drag in the white space of the graph. Like that? In the graph. Oh, in the, oh, in the graph, got it. Yeah. Like. That's right. Now click and drag and make it, make it so that you catch some points in that rectangle. Okay. There you go. Uh, so again, like you can see the um, dynamic linked selection. And of course, you can just click on a point. You don't have to use the, the marquee. 
Can you then make it sort so that the the table shows you the data points that you're selecting or will it always just? You'd like to sort the table by top speed? Um, yeah, sure. Okay, there you go. Yep, there we Data's go. Got it. Now when you select the top, any, any of the speeds in the graph, they should be contiguous in the table. Got it. And Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, who, who was the Firefox problem? Miss, uh, Missy. Missy. Yeah. Uh, if David would stop sharing, then you could share. Are you going? Yes. Thank you. So it should be a drag and drop, correct? That it's like if I were to click on bizarre. city and just okay, and I get this error message. Oh, okay. So um, you know how to um, refresh your browser? That little cur curly arrow in the. Yeah, we did that before, and it brought me back to the ground zero, starting over you, again. Do you have Chrome? I do. I, do. I would suggest you use Chrome. You know, I, I'm using Firefox and I'm not having those issues. Oh, so okay. Be the version of Firefox that you're using. Yeah, and I think it updated yeah. recently. Um, I'll switch over to Chrome. I'll just make it easier for today and I'll play around later with the Chrome. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't like it. Okay. I'm going to note that you had that problem though, so that we can investigate it. Any other um, discoveries? Or things that you discovered about Kodak, maybe that you particularly liked or that didn't work or anything like that? You know, actually I'm in, um, I'm in Chrome. I thought I was in Firefox because I have other windows open in Firefox, but I was using Chrome for this. Oh, well, let's, let me know if bad things start happening again. Um, I wanted to ask, are there any pre-existing data sets that are specific to like different science disciplines? Because um, I know we can drag in our own data sets if we want, but um, like, let's say that I wanted a data set on, um, you know, climate temperatures um, over time. Wow. Uh, well, uh, there are. And in the last part of this Google Doc, um, if you scroll down to the bottom where it says more example documents, uh -huh. that's a good place to go for the kind of thing you're talking about. And we might have time to explore there later. But there are quite a few resources. And of course, anytime you, if you can find the data, then you can drag it into CodeApp and we'll explore that in a minute too. Okay. Okay. So any discoveries? We'll just mention that actually I was in Chrome. So the problem was occurring in Chrome. Yeah. And I'll just uh, hope that it happens again. That's what a software developer says. <laughs> <laughs> but a teacher says, no, I hope it does not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to do a demo of uh, roller coasters. And that's interesting. Share. Here it is. So, did you guys have this? view up for a while anyway? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you figured out how to make it into a, something you're more accustomed to, mm -hmm. which is this kind of table. Now, one of the problems that some people have with CodeApp is that they, they start treating this as a spreadsheet. And it really isn't a spreadsheet, um, as you've probably already figured out. It's, quite, it's something quite different. Now, suppose 
I, somebody suggested that maybe the age group um, has some kind of trend with what? Like older um, roller coasters. And their cups. Less tall. Materials that they're built out of would be one, right? They would be built with different materials, and we do have that here. We have wooden and steel. So if I put that here, what do you think? Hmm. Well, we have a little tool here to help with that. Let's put the percents, and we'll Yay. use row percents. And are is there a difference between steel and wooden or a difference maybe i should put column percent let's try that so in the newest ones 80 percent are steel in the oldest ones 61 percent are wooden and only 39 percent are steel so that shows a trend doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah okay now i want to think about a different one I wanted to do drop or max height. So when I do that, notice how the graph changes. Do you see kind of a trend there mm -hmm. uh -huh. from older, yeah. recent, and newest? And one way I can see that trend is to put the mean in. Okay. And so I see oh, that cool. the mean here is 81. No, me 81. And a problem here is that, that this is not well documented. It should say the units, right? What do you think that 81 stands for? What unit would it be? I would assume feet, feet? or meters. Let's, let's make an assumption, possibly fallacious, that it's feet. <laughs> mm. yeah. And now we see that feet is marked here. Nice. So there's that. Now, suppose I wanted to actually get these as numbers into the table. This is the real demo. Mm. So the way we can do that is to drag. Where is it? You know, when there's a lot of, um, we call these things attributes, it gets hard to find the one I'm looking for because it can be off over here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is switch back to this case card and it's much easier to see them all. And now I'm going to drag age group uh -huh. up to the top. Ooh. Now I've got two tables and I can scroll through the age groups. There's the older ones. And notice I've got 31 here. And notice they're selected over here. So those are the older ones. And here are the recent ones. And here are the newest ones. Let's see what that looks like in the table. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um. So here are the three groups. And I can select a group, and that shows me the members of that group, the cases that are in that group. Okay, you got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's now, great. suppose I want to compute something about each of these groups. Since I had, um, what is it over here? height. Suppose I compute the mean height. I do that by pressing this little plus sign, which says add a new attribute to this table. And I'm going to call it mean height. All right, what do I do? I could come over here and type and say oh, that's an 81. I could type the number 81 in here. But this would be rather tedious, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
126, and error prone as well. So I don't want to do that. I want to use um, a formula to compute the height. So one of the choices here is edit formula. All right, probably need a function like the mean. I wonder if there's a mean. Well, there are some statistical functions here. Let's see. Yep, I see the mean. And over here is a little information button. And if I press that, it'll give me information about the mean. So this is the documentation for the functions. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. So um, I actually need to leave, but I noticed you're recording the session, right? Yes. So are we going to be getting a link to the, the recording later? What a good idea. Oh, because that would be great, because I don't, I don't want to miss the rest of this. It's really exciting. Um, I have to go take care of my children. Oh. Yeah. Timo, say hi. All right. Well, have a good time. It's Missy, thank right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Was it Missy? Bye. Was it Missy or Arami? That was Arami. It was yes, Arami. Yeah. Was Arami. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. This was great. All right. Bye-bye. Uh, so mean looks like the right thing. And I say there's an expression and a filter, but probably I just need the expression. And there were some examples down there. And so if I insert a value, I want height. And then I apply. Oh, and I get a little more precision than I was getting over there on the graph. And now there's another interesting thing, which is not going to seem all that beautiful for this example, but I can actually plot this. So there are my three mean heights. And sometimes it's very useful. In fact, if you manage to do it, we'll see an example of that. So I can't tell, I, I cannot possibly convince you in this, with this one example, that this is a very powerful feature. But it is. Yeah. We've restructured the data to make it hierarchical. We've got groups, and each group has members that are the roller coasters. I feel like I'm still learning about what we can do with this after quite a few years. Any questions? Can you tell me what the slider is about? Okay. What's a good context for that? Would you write that down here at the very bottom where it says questions and we'll come back to it okay. and I'll have a good example by then. All right, let's just spend, oh, somebody mentioned weather. So let's do the weather thing. So there's a project I'm working with right now called WeatherX. It's based at EDC in Boston. And um, I'm going to do a demo of it. So I'm going to go to the weather portal. Hmm. So this thing here is not an, a built-in part of Kodak. It's what we call a plug-in. And its purpose is to give us access to data. And actually next week, it's going to appear in this menu of two other plugins. So it'll feel like a built-in part of Kodak, but it's actually separate. Now what we can do is get weather data from any of these weather stations that are plotted on the map. And by default, we're pointing at Mount Washington, which has the most, some of the most extreme weather in the world. And we're going to go back about a month and get the max and the min daily. So I'll just say get data. 
And there's my data. And you can see it's organized in that hierarchical fashion. Because if I go to another weather station, I'm zooming in to close by me. This one is San Francisco downtown. If I click on it, that gets filled in here. And now I'll say get data. Come on. That's not good. That's really not good. We need a cancel button, don't we? So this is in development. So it has bugs. And we just encountered one. So I'm going to refresh my screen. And it says, did you really want to do that? And yes, I do. And I'll get these data. And I'll go, this time I won't try to get uh, the particular one. There, OK. Now I've got data from two stations. And that means that if I make a graph, let me make this into a card. Notice how you can see the hierarchical structure here. When I'll put on the x-axis. Notice we've got a date axis here. This is very helpful. And yeah. And now I'll put, um, let's see, it's still winter. So let's do the min. That's got to be more interesting than the max. And remember, Mount Washington is uh, uh, high and windy and cold. So let's see if that bears out. Which of these points do you think are Mount Washington? Well, if I take the where and I put it over here, now I get a legend. And cool. sure enough, Mount Washington is a lot colder than Sacramento, California. With me? Yes. So this whether we call it a portal, a data portal, gives me access to a huge amount of data. I haven't told you yet, but CODAP can't deal with a huge amount of data. Actually, no matter what program you're using, eventually you can give it more data than it can handle. And for CODAP, depending on the machines you have, it's around 5,000 rows of a table or 5,000 cases. Uh, my machine is faster, so I routinely work with 20,000. But um, school computers, Chromebooks, tend to be not quite as powerful as my machine, and so we, we say 5,000 is a good number. So what I'd like you to do, oh, so given that we can get weather data, I didn't show you this, but you can get monthly data, monthly averages, or daily data. Um, what are a couple investigations that we might undertake? Well, just uh, from, from my experience with students is they really like to see that they actually learn a lot from seeing the actual data to show the differences between uh, being on the coast versus being inland. So we might possible investigation might be looking at a station in the middle of the country and one that's coastal on the east coast and the west coast um, at the same latitude. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say difference between the coasts? The yeah, coast? uh, it, no, inland and coast. Inland and coast. Coast um, at the same latitude. At the same latitude. Okay, that's a good one. One more. I actually teach students from um, around the globe, so um, I would say maybe uh, temperature um, from different parts of the globe. Well, we only have the U.S., 
Oh, okay. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be able to do something with climate change, maybe? What do you think we might be able to do with climate change? Temperature. Yeah, like, can, I know you said temperature over a month, but can you do temperature, like, over a course of, like, a decade? Yeah, you need 30 years of data for that. Well, we can go back uh, about 100 years. Awesome. That works. <laughs> yeah, big time. Okay, now there's a caveat. We can go back 100 years at some weather stations, mm -hmm. but not all of them. And it can be very frustrating. And we're in the project that I'm working with. We have this frustration that we keep clicking on a weather station that doesn't have any data for what we want. But I would like you to undertake one of those investigations in a group of two or three people. Uh, how do I do this? I'm, I'm staring at how to work with breakout rooms. It looks like I'm going to get the same three breakout rooms, but I don't want that. So I can delete that room. And that moved. Oh, but then it doesn't. There should be a random button in there where you can just randomly assign. Like it does it for you. There, following your advice, I did. So I'm going to move you into these new rooms, and I'd like you to undertake one of those investigations, or if you find that you don't like either of them and you can agree with your partner or partners, uh, come up with a new investigation. And again, it really helps to have one person uh, share their screen, and you might want to trade at some point and have a different person share. And we'll take 10 or 15 minutes for this, and that'll be good. Any questions? Here we go. Uh-oh, Regina. Regina, did you have a problem? Hello. Where did Regina go? Participants. Hmm. There we go. That worked. I like that. Uh, we were working with, I have a data set um, of uh, esophageal cancer 
um, by age, um, smoking right. status. So like the idea of being able to combine different variables and see, you know, different variables. So right now it looks like, you know, you have an X and a Y. Um, and then occasionally you can categorize by throwing something on the essentially Z axis. Is that correct? Um, it's not wrong, <laughs> but there's more to it. <laughs> That, I'll put that as a go. question. Okay. Oh, David. So yeah, sorry. I have, to, I have a class that I have to teach in about 10 minutes, so, or a little less than that now. Okay, so I will see everyone later. Bye-bye. Yeah, we're still teaching. Uh, 1245 is when my class starts. So. And are you teaching remotely? Yes, we're doing, I'm doing chem remotely. Oh, right now we're wow. doing organic chemistry. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, wow. unfortunately no labs, but... You know, there's, there's, David, you know, there's a whole bunch of open resources with video labs and, and things too. Yes. Yeah. I'm starting to look into some of them. Um, yeah. Labster has some good ones. PBS has some good ones and Flynn has been doing some live. All right. I'll check it out. Okay. We just started this last week. So it's, it's, it's all new. Yeah. We but, started, um, same, same thing. We started this week. So. All right. Thank you. Um, Take care. Bye bye. I'll be in touch. Bye. Okay. So, comments. What was that like? Everybody's speaking at once. Um, I mean, I really like it. It's gonna. I have a learning curve, and. Um, Right now, I have a learning curve with just Zooming for the students that I have. So I, I need like summer time to really digest it, but I like it. Yeah, I want time to just be able to like play around with it and, and try different things. Yeah. And, Go ahead. I was just gonna say, and develop questions that we have for you, such as accessing the data um, and, and some other questions. Um, because we had a couple issues with clicking on things. We were able to figure it out, troubleshoot and figure it out, but uh, it'd be, it, it, like uh, Diana mentioned, it's gonna take a little bit of a learning curve to just to kick in and get it started for ourselves. And sometimes you don't know exactly what questions or how you wanna process the data till you start throwing them into the, the graphing tools. So, you know, you're like, Oh, if I put these two pieces, these two data points together, I'll see something cool. And then you're like, okay, that wasn't what I expected. Now, how can I adjust it and play with it and answer question my new questions? Uh -huh. So, um, you know, it, that's one of the things that's that's challenging is until you get in there and work with the data and start managing it, you sometimes don't know how to manipulate it the best. Yeah, what we find is that. Um, Kids get started easily through doing something like the getting started document that you did or the challenge cards that you probably saw mentioned in the Google Doc. Um, and all they need initially is the ability to drag attributes from a table to the graph. And they notice things. And they want to know what you start seeing conjectures about what's going on very quickly. And the tool recedes as the conjectures come to the fore and let me see if I can figure this out. And then as I think it was Laura or Diana said, uh oh, I don't know how to make the tool do this thing. And I need to make it do something. And uh, then, it, of course, it depends on your teaching style, how you deal with that. Do you pull everybody back together? Do you encourage people to um, ask each other? Do um, you have a place to post discoveries, et cetera, et cetera? But um, we find that kids um, get excited when they use CODAP to explore data that's relevant to them. Sometimes even data that's not relevant to them. But, um, okay. Um, I just remembered about the slider. 
and I'm going to go, I think I have an example document that will do, not, do that nicely. Where did it go? Okay. I have to do a search here. There we go. Oh, I should be um, sharing my my screen here so you can see this thing. Share. Okay. So I found the document that I'm interested in. It's called Birgit the Giant Tortoise dot code app. And here, if I double click on it, CodeApp has gotten hooked up to Google Drive. So, and this will happen to you semi-automatically. There's a time, a moment when you'll have to uh, give CodeApp permission to steal all your sensitive no-no uh, to <laughs> something or other. So I'm gonna open it with CodeApp. I hope you're getting the sense that CodeApp is document oriented. It's like a word processor or a spreadsheet. It's, it's a document with stuff in it and you can save and restore these things. Um, so here's the data and you notice that it has longitude and latitude. And whenever you have longitude and latitude, you can make a map. So we make a map and there's our data. I wonder what this data is about. Well, we get a clue. Birgit is a giant tortoise. I wonder where we could be. Any ideas? Are these the hatcheries or like the locations that we find it? Find them? Ah, well, I do know that it's one tortoise. Oh, that's where it's been. Cool. And if I zoom out, you're going to start to understand where this tortoise is. Yeah, it looks like the Galapagos. Galapagos. It's the yeah. Galapagos. No, yay. <laughs> All right. Is the poor thing stuck in a crater? <laughs> the poor thing. You think it's unhappy there? Well, I guess it's happy. That's, yeah, that's me saying it's a <laughs> poor thing. <laughs> You think it would want to be in the open ocean with its buddies, um, yeah. but would it survive actually, there because it's actually, yeah, acclimated? It's a, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry, it, and it's a tortoise versus a turtle, sea turtle. So that, take that out too. I know there's a difference between the two. If I turn off the points but leave on the connecting lines, you you start to get a sense of where Birgit spends most of its time. Cool. And in fact, if I make a graph. And I show. Um, um, can I ask a question? Are those green tones? Is that showing vegetation? It I looks green to me. So. Okay. Altitude. That's what I was looking for. So let's put altitude here. <laughs> hmm. What do you suppose that is? What if I select these points? Oh, and I have to come back here and turn on the points again. There. And these points? Hmm. I want to know when when? Target is in each altitude. All right, let's put the timestamp here. And again, because CodeApp understands about dates. Ah. So there's in February, Birgit is here. 
Oh, and that's showing up over here, but kind of not very helpfully. It should be on top. And this one, also over here. Where are these points? Let's see. Do you think there's an investigation here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have really enjoyed playing with these data and wondering about what Birgit is doing in these different locations. I'm, oh, I'm oh. wondering, um, because of its location too, it's got opposite season, right? So February, March is summer for that tortoise, correct? Or, or well, it's almost on the equator, so that's another good question. We have temperature. Let's make another graph. Have you discovered that you don't have to go to the table? You can just grab it from here and put it over there. Or that you can click on it and choose an app to you can click on it and temperature. That's what I thought. That's a that's an equatorial place if there ever was one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but I was supposed to show you sliders and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you I you triggered tons of questions. I teach biology, so my mind yeah. went to every question yeah. possible. Yeah. Now there's a beer get with sliders. Here we go. This is the one. So I'm gonna open this one. And so one of the things you can do with sliders is make an animation. That's not the only thing you can do with sliders, but it's one thing. So I am going to move this slider back to day zero. So there's Birgit. Let me move the map up so we can see the whole thing. And now I'm going to move through the days. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, cool. There we go. And that's working because of the slider, and I'll show you how in a moment. And this is one tortoise, yeah? yeah. It's one tortoise. Oh. Huh. Interesting. About half a year. Look, she, I, I think that's where she's laying an egg. That's what I think, too. But I don't know what she's doing over here. <laughs> Mating? I don't know. No, no. No, no. I know. We're going to have to do some research. <laughs> now, how did that work? So look at latitude here. Notice how there's no values. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, there won't be any values anywhere. So let me show you here. So here is a value and in the in this region there are values. They're all the same. And then, oh. Hold on. There. But only oh, for okay. a portion of it. So what we've done is to limit the cases that have values. So only those show up in the map. And we did that with a formula. So this formula says, if day of year, which is this number over here, is greater than day, which is the slider, minus two, and day of year is less than day plus two, then we get a latitude. Otherwise, we get nothing. So as the slider moves, this formula evaluates to a number for some, for different cases, the ones right around a certain day. And we can see that in a graph. I put lat here. 
No. If I put. No, well, you can see these move around. Oh, that's not very convincing. So that is one <laughs> use of a slider to <laughs> animate things. Another right. use is to fit a function. So let's say we're fitting a quadratic to something. Then you can uh, plot a function in a scatter plot and have a slider be the coefficient of the squared term and drag the slider and the curve moves. Um, this is not a very, there's something called planets. Ah, let's go there. Let's go back to our document and down here is a pointer to the CODAP example documents page. So here's a bunch of documents and oh, there's Beer the Giant Taurus. Nice. And I'm looking for the planets. Have I missed it already? Nope, there it is. There it is. And if I plot um, orbit radius, versus year length, but I want to flip them. Okay, what if I try to fit a curve through that? So I can plot a function and I can bring up a, a formula editor for that. And so it's orbit radius to some power, right? Orbit radius. And then the, that guy means raised to a power. And let's try squared. Okay. Nope. And if I change that to cubed, that's going to be worse, right? Yeah. So let's just do one. Well, we know what that is. That's linear. So it should be something in between one and two. You with me? Yep. Mm -hmm. So let's make a slider. Let's call this slider K. And let's set it to something between one and two. And now let's change the formula to be K. Oh, uh. oops. What do you think? Yeah. That's too little. That's too much. Let's expand this out a little bit. How's that? Nice. What do you think that number really is? It's pretty darn close to 1.5, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 1.5 is 3 halves. 3 divided by 2. And that, my friends, is kept is um, Kepler's law that yeah. for planetary motion, the year length equals the orbital radi radius to the three halves, or if you, mul if you square both sides, it's year length squared equals orbital radius cubed. And that holds for orbital motion anywhere in space. Hmm. Nice. And this is how Kepler discovered it with data. Right. 
and putting this line through the uh, planets. That's a really nice demonstration of how that works. Yeah. Okay, so here we are. Of course, I put more stuff in here. I knew we wouldn't get to most of this. And, but you can do that. And uh, I hope you will. Definitely. So there are four of you. Let's take a little, let's go around and just say something you're taking away from this experience. And I'll read off the names. I'll stop sharing. So, Laura, you're in my top left corner there. So, um, I've, I've taken away that, that it's a, as an adult, playing with this is really encouraging and, and um, you know, exciting me about playing with data. And I think it's very easy. It's so user-friendly and easy that you can take it to students and have them do the same sort of discovery on their own by you know, playing around once they get the, the rules of what you click on and how you drag. I think it's really powerful on how you can teach, teach them to think about data and, and to, to ask questions. Diana. So, um, like I said, I have a learning curve, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh my God, I can actually finally get the math teachers to realize that math and science can work together on projects um, that can be interwoven because we're trying to go with um, place-based and project-based learning. Um, and it's been my experience throughout the years that it's easy to get um, sorry, my alarm's going off. Um, it's easy for us, for me to get history to work on collaborative projects. It's easy for me to get English to work on collaborative projects with the science department, but the math department sees math as, as just calculations and paper and they, and they don't see how that can work. With this, I can actually give them a, some demos that would click faster, I think. All right the dream of collaboration among science and math teachers. Interdisciplinary. Missy. <laughs> Um, what I love about this is that it takes away that little piece, you know, I always love doing paper and pencil with the, with the students and, um, and I think it's somewhat therapeutic and uh, the students buckle down and, you know, they put paper to pencil. But however, I think um, we sometimes get lost with the, the science behind plots and graphs and visualizations. And I think that's what's so powerful here is that it's expedient um, and that the students can check immediately uh, if, about the accuracy of their choices of axes, uh, right? The, left, the bottom axis, excuse me, the horizontal versus the vertical, uh, what data that they show, is there a correlation and getting into that correlation causation component. Um, so that, that I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. Um, uh, but I do have questions about bringing in our own data sets, which I'll explore uh, somehow later with uh, the tools that you've provided us. And Regina. Um, kind of a combination of kind of what's already been said. Um, I like that I like that it both it it connects the math to the science but it also gives students an opportunity to observe a graph and like really understand what that graph is saying rather than it just being the correct answer that it has that it has meaning and to be able to see how changing a variable will change that graph and, and how it changes over time. And I think that's really important. I have one last demo, which relates to how do you get data into CODAP, your own data. Can you hang in for that? Here we go. Yep. I'll share my screen again. And here I have some COVID data. And I'm going to download it. It's a CSV, comma separated values, which it's easy. Oh no, it's a, I think it'll be a, let's see. 
let's see what happens when I go into CodeApp, the release version. And I'm just going to drag this in. Nope. Okay. It didn't, it's not comma, comma separated values. It's uh, an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to export from the Excel spreadsheet. You can't see that, I know, but I'm doing it. And now, come here and I have that data and I'm just dragging it from my desktop. Can you see that I have something on my mouse? The blank screen. Oh, okay. If you were actually seeing my screen, you'd see that I have a file on my mouse and I'm dropping it into CodeApp. And so there's the data. And if I make a graph of date versus cases, I get that kind of graph that we've seen too much of, mm. right? And where is this? New York. Mm. One more thing. Suppose I want you to be able to work with this document. I share it. I say get link to shared view. I enable sharing. And now I have a link which I can copy. And chat to you and you can click on that link in the chat window and you will get exactly what I have. As a teacher, you can set up a document, give the students the shared link, they all get their own copies of the document their own separate copies, so they work on it independently. They can share it back to you. They can share it to you and you can project it or whatever. So this ability to share a document is really important in classroom. It really makes using CodeApp in the classroom um, comparatively easy. And we're over. I think we could have gone for another hour, but here we are. I enjoyed working with you this morning very much, except it's afternoon for some of you. So um, you're going to share this video with us? I will do that. I will, okay. I will sh share it to the whole list of people, like I've been sending out the emails. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good it's day. wonderful. Thank you very Stay much. You safe. Yeah. You too. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye.